The Secret to Getting into Medical School with Low GPA. Hey, BMO Nation, welcome to another episode of our One Question Podcast. My name is Ronza and I'm joined by Mang. Hi, everyone. We have nothing to sell you, just pure strategies and tips so that everyone has access to e- access to education, of course. In case you've never watched or listened to one of these before, they are completely unscripted. There's no visual audio effects of that nature. It's just pure content. Now we have 10 minutes to tackle a topic each week. And this week's topic is the secret to getting into medical school with low GPA. Now I'm going to set the timer here for 10 minutes. Okay. Um, All right. So now I know you might be wondering uh, with this topic, how is this even possible? You know, we are taught and trained to always get great grades and, and make sure that we excel in school. And that's how we pursue our dreams in medical school? How is this even possible? Well, first and foremost, uh, one thing that I do want to stress when it comes to the application process is that it is a holistic process. There's a lot of different components that you need to consider. And the GPA is just one aspect of that. Now, one thing that we're going to talk about uh, in this podcast today, and I'll help and I'll allow Meng to kind of step in here and answer some of these questions is really how do you tap how do you tackle the other topics that are just as critical right so outside of the gpa we have our application component then we have a casper uh prep test if that's included uh for your program then we have the medical school interview and this is not even also including all the other components in application right there are letters of references you have to consider your activity sketch the secondaries so meng there's a lot to cover here in 10 minutes and we're going to try our best here but i guess why don't we just first start off with applications you know what do students need to consider and and really need to ensure that they excel in when it comes to their application if they have a low GPA yeah well um, I want to just clarify that the the GPA says something about your academic abilities but it may not even be the whole picture which is why we're going to talk about all these other things. Uh, Some people have a low GPA because maybe in their first year or their second year, they were just trying to get used to the whole environment of college, right? So it actually isn't an accurate representation of your academic abilities. And that's why there are all of these other components. And that's why the admissions committee will take into consideration and um, really highly value these other components because they can say a lot more about who you are now and your abilities now. So in terms of the application, um, that really does a lot to round out your your, your entire package because what it's demonstrating is your motivations for pursuing medical school as well as your other um, non-academic competencies or your soft skills, skills that are actually in some ways uh, more important uh, in terms of predicting how well you're going to do in medical school or in the medical profession. Um, Things like empathy. How important is that for being a physician, right? You need to be able to relate to your patients in order to give them the best care. Professionalism, all those things don't come out in that one score that is your GPA. So in terms of the applications, obviously the biggest component of that for most schools is the personal statement. And that's where you're going to really be able to tell the admissions committee why you want to go to medical school and what makes you the the best candidate for doing that. And you're going to be able to relate to them a lot better in writing than through a score. So this is a place for you to really showcase your candidacy and really stand out from the rest of the applicant pool. Those are all very much excellent points, Meng. And I think one thing that we have to stress here is in order to excel and and really ensure that you put your best foot forward in your application to overcome, you know, some areas that you're really, um, you know, I guess challenged with, whether it's a GPA that's not as competitive, is to start early on your applications. And that's uh, something that we always stress is start early, have a game plan and ensure that you're well organized. And as many of you, if you don't know, should know, there is a rolling process. So you wanna make sure that you are starting early so you could put all those components together and uh, submit your application so you have a higher chance and, you know, obviously increasing that probability of getting, um, you know, that interview stage, getting to that acceptance letter and and ensuring that you get into the school that you want to get into. Okay. Um, Outside of applications or actually uh, let's delve into a little bit more of applications. I I do want to make sure we have time here for the rest of the components. 
In terms of references, like these are oftentimes overlooked or it's secondary for students to really consider references. You know, they're really just focused on a personal statement. They're focused on ensuring that they have all the activities down and, you know, they're working out how to say it. But why are references important? Why is that something that, you know, uh, students or anyone listening or watching this right now should really consider references when wanting to excel their application to overcompensate for that potential low GPA? Mm -hmm. Well, the references are there to corroborate what you're saying in your application about your skills, about your motivations, right? So, um, so when you have that professor of yours or physician you shadowed, when you have um, their word that is completely congruent with what you're saying about yourself in your application, that definitely works to strengthen your application um, overall. And, um, and having, and when we say having, like when we say that you should have a great reference, it doesn't mean that it has to come from someone with a big name. I think that's um, a, bis a big misconception out there is that, oh, you know, I have to get that super famous researcher that I only had like two hours of contact with to write me a reference. No, that's not what we're saying at all a great references from someone who knows you well and can say a lot about your skills and your competencies and someone who has specific examples and can include them in your reference letter that's going to make the strongest reference letter and by just listening to that description of that reference letter you can already tell how it complements your application Absolutely. And do not underestimate the time to get that reference letter. Mm -hmm. Start early, reach out to the professors, reach out to, you know, if there's a physician that you're working with or that you've uh, worked under or shadowed, whatever the case might be, a volunteer placement, respect their time. You know, you might be on a time crunch, but not only do they have their busy professional lives going on, but the likelihood of other students asking them for a reference is probably high. So you mm -hmm. want to make sure that you uh, reach out, connect with them, make sure they still remember you if it's been a while um, and ensure that you can secure them as a great reference, not just any reference, a great source of reference to those abilities that Meng just mentioned. Okay, excellent. We have time here now to cover about three minutes or so to tackle the rest of the components that are critical here, Meng. <laughs> I know that's not enough time, but let's do our best to help out um, our viewers or listeners here. So in terms of CASPER, uh, and the CASPER prep, uh, the CASPER test, uh, you know, some students are familiar with this, some are not. It is a growing, uh, popular test uh, that's been commonly used by different programs. What, what's quickly something that you'd suggest for students to really make sure that they could ace the CASPER to um, increase the probability of their chances of getting into medical school, regardless of that, you know, that uh, GPA that we just mentioned that could be low? Well, you should really understand the format of the CASPER and make sure you are practicing for that test um, and in a way that simulates the format of the test. That's what's going to help you to do that the best. And that includes knowing what kinds of questions you might encounter so that you can really be prepared with strategies to tackle all those different question types, as well as knowing what the timing is, um, how many questions you're going to get at the same time, um, knowing that you're going to be typing answers as well as recording answers. So knowing all of that will help you to practice in a way that's realistic and getting realistic practice is what's gonna help you to do well on the actual test. Wonderful. And obviously if everything goes well there, you know, and you're lucky enough to, to get to the interview stage, uh, you know, now this could look like many different things uh, for many of you, and you could have more than one different format, whether that's um, in person, online, or virtual, whether that's a multiple mini interview, whether that's a panel uh, of, uh, you know, panelists interviewing you, or even the traditional one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's very important to stress here, and something that uh, Meng mentioned earlier for Casper is understand uh, the structures, understand the format. You know, a lot of these are timed interviews for reading a prompt of its multiple mini interview or responding to it. Again, whether it's online or in person, they could be timed. Even if it's not timed, you want to be respectful of someone's time and not over talk. <laughs> but definitely understand the format, uh, understand the instructions that are being asked of you, understand the different types of questions that are going to be asked of you so you can apply the appropriate structure. And I think uh, we have about a minute here to really discuss stress management when it comes to interviews, Mang, or anything else that I may have missed in terms of interview preparation, uh, what would you say for that? How could students really focus in on that to ensure they do well? 
Yeah, well, stress management is a really important component, not just for the interviews, but also for the Casper because it is a timed test as well. Um, something else I would say that's really important is to really hone your presentation skills, your look for, you know, body language habits that you can correct. Um, making eye contact is something that some people struggle with. Getting rid of filler words is another component that people often overlook, but that really degrades your the quality of your performance if you don't fix that. So there are lots of things outside of just the content of your answers that you should work on in order to do well on the interview. Wonderful. And that's actually time. Um, all right. Uh, obviously, we'd love to talk more about this, but we are limited to 10 minutes and we're very strict with that, but you can catch more of these episodes. So thank you so much for watching or listening. If you like this as much as we uh, enjoyed making this for you, then go ahead and share it with a friend, subscribe if you can, so you don't miss any future episodes. Of course, ask any questions that you might have in the comments section. Until then, see you. Bye, everyone.